set up of speakers for this afternoon um, webinar. So um, considering the higher risk confronted by the older persons uh, during the outbreak of pandemic uh, such as this, so we thought it's very timely that we organize one just on 1st of October because today is the International Day of Older Persons. So we'd like to take this opportunity to highlight the impact of aging in the respective countries. So we will have three countries represented here, Singapore, Thailand, and Japan. So we want to see how the various countries, as well as the science centers or science museum in the various countries, uh, enhance the lives of our seniors through science and technology. So uh, each speaker will be given 15 to 20 minutes to share about how their lives are affected by uh, the aging process, for example, and how their work at the Science Museum or Science Centre revolves around science and technology that can enhance potentially the lives of uh, the seniors. So uh, without further ado, let me first invite from Singapore, Mr. Francis Kauri. Yes, um, let me just give a quick introduction to Francis. So Francis is one of our senior uh, guides at our exhibition uh, in Science Center. So he is a retired, uh, semi-retired, I would say, a lecturer <laughs> from the Singapore Management University and the National University of Singapore. So he teaches a lot of different courses. You know? Now he's even into technology and business. And so he's doing a lot of volunteer work. I think he's keeping a very good and active lifestyle. So um, at our, our kind of RSVP, we call it RSVP in Singapore. So it's actually an organization that looks at uh, engaging our senior people in Singapore. So he, he teaches there uh, and volunteers there uh, specifically. So, um, and what else does he do? I mean, at our Dialogue with Time exhibition, which he will tell you more about, he volunteers at our Dialogue with Time exhibition and, and how he used exhibition to guide our visitors from the young to the old and how he share about the complexity of aging and its impact on society. Yes, so may I invite uh, Francis to take the floor? Thank you, Francis. The floor is yours. Uh, hello, uh, can you all hear me? Yes. Uh... Yes. Okay, you can, right. Uh, my name is Francis Pavri. As uh, uh, Song Chun was telling, I am retired. I'm now, I now uh, am a senior guide at the... This is the wrong... Hold on, sorry. Um, getting myself organized. Yes. There we go. Here. Oops, here. Uh, yes, I'm a guide at the... Uh, Science Center, the dialogue with time. I'll talk about it more in a while. And of course, this is a picture of us, uh, about 25 of us. Uh, one of those days we decided to do something. Uh, we had a walk on uh, the highest uh, peak in Singapore called Bukit Timah Summit. And if you know, the highest peak in Singapore is a fantastic 160.63 meters. That's how high Singapore is. And uh, we'll, I'll say talk a little bit about some of the issues we have about aging. Okay. Uh, okay, I got it. I know. Okay, sorry. All right. So a little bit about Singapore and its number of residents and the aging issues that uh, uh, are now happening in Singapore. In Singapore, we have, uh, as it says, there are about four million residents. That doesn't include. Uh, but others, like uh, we have lots of uh, foreign residents as well, makes up about five and a half million. So four, and a half, four million of them are residents, are Singaporeans and permanent residents. Hold on, this thing. <laughs> oh, got it. Okay, hold on. And 900 of them, this is the extent of the issue. Okay. So just to give you something about aging issues in Singapore, in 1970, we had about one in 30 people who are over 65. And today now we have one in seven. So can you, now you can imagine the extent of the issues about aging in Singapore. And if you project that to 2030, it's only one in four. And as we all know, one in four is unsustainable. So how we're gonna change that ratio in 2030 is still at the top of government's minds to try and resolve this aging problem. Next, next. Okay, hey, no, no, you've gone the other way. Okay, so in 2030, yes, that's right. We will have about 
25%, no, 20% of people will be over 65 years old. That's a huge number. Right? I, I, and I believe it's probably one of the uh, largest in the world in terms of ratio. Go on. Okay, a little bit about Dialogue with Time, and then we'll show you a little clip about this. Dialogue with Time is a uh, exhibit within our Singapore Science Center. Uh, it's a uh, joint uh, venture between three organizations, Science Center Singapore, our Minister of Health, who understand who are, who are really, you know, uh, aging is one of their top priorities right now and this company called Dialogue Social Enterprise, uh, which is a company in Germany. They created this Dialogue with Time exhibit, and we are a franchisee, and we are the only permanent franchisee and the first permanent franchisee in the world. So we took the whole concept from Germany and we built an exhibit similar to theirs within Singapore. And uh, we'll give you a tour of that in a minute. Okay. Right, so Dialogue with Time, it, this is a, a little bit about that. I'll, I'll bring it around, but I'll show you a little map of this first, okay? If you, if you oops. Ah, okay. Uh, normally when they come, they start at the entrance, we give them to this, uh, this area. I can't see the color, by the way. Uh, this area here, where, they, where we talk about the signs of aging, just a little bit about how aging happens, how the cells develop, how they get old, how they die, etc. And then we take them over to these two dialogue rooms, and this is quite interesting. It's a dialogue between us and our participants to try and understand from the participants' perspective as well as ours what aging is about. Then we bring them to this yellow room, which shows the what happens when you age, the decaying process. The, for example, our hearing gets worse, our eyes get worse, our brain don't function as well. And there's some exhibits which simulate that, that process. Then we go to a pink room and the pink room is interesting because although many older people have uh, problems with some of their physical parts, there are lots of people who seem to have overcome that. And I will talk a little bit about one particular person in a while. Then we bring them to this dialogue room. This is the dialogue room two, as you can see. Dialogue room two is really a, is a, a PowerPoint presentation of the aging process in Singapore. Some of the issues we face and some of the ways we hope we can solve that. And then we take them over to here, which is a free time exhibit. They look at some, some nostalgia about what happened in recent years to Singapore's development. Okay. So why don't I, we go through a little clip of this whole exhibition. Uh, we've done a little video on this thing. And you'll see that a little bit more now. Yeah, here we go. Okay. Welcome to Dialogue with Time. We're now at the Science Center Singapore. Welcome to Dialogue with Time. We're now at the Science Center Singapore. Dialogue with Time is a franchise of the Dialogue Social Enterprise from Germany. My name is Francis Marbury and I'm a senior guide at the center. One of the requirements of a senior guide is that they must be over 65 years old. And the reason is because when we are that age, we can explain the aging phenomenon from a personal perspective. This is our exhibit called Daniel. This is a slideshow where we compress the aging of Daniel from a toddler to 70 years in three minutes. The objective is to illustrate that we all age and the aging is largely imperceptible on a day-to-day -day basis. But over the years, aging is inevitable. Let me take you to dialogue room one. Come, follow me. This is dialogue room one. In this room, we explain to visitors about our own aging journey. For example, this is me in 1951 when I was six years old. 
and this is my friend, a family friend, and these are all my siblings. In fact, you know, there, there are two more who are not in this picture. As I grew older, one of the major activities I enjoy is hiking. And this was a, well, I wouldn't say wonderful, but it was an experience when I got lost in the Malaysian jungle. And I was stranded alone for 15 hours while people were trying to look for me. And the experience, though not wonderful, was really memorable. And of course, you can see the marks of those memories still on my legs today. Now that I'm fully retired, the main, one major activity we go through is gatherings, friends and parties. And here is a picture of my friends and me when we celebrated my 70th birthday. The wonderful thing about things about these friends is that we've been friends for 60 years when we were kids running around in short pants and making mischief. Now that the visitors have heard our personal story about our aging process, we want them to tell the same story about their aging, if they're older. If they're younger, then we want them to think about the future and what they believe their aging should be like or they want to be like. We do that by giving them pictures. They have a selection of pictures and they pick one which they think represents what their journey will be. And the experience has been quite uh, remarkable in some ways. We had one instance of a little 10 year old. She sat and she uh, went through the pictures and she picked this one. And she started to tear. So the teacher got worried and took her out and asked her what happened. She says this picture reminds her of a grandma who had just passed away a few days ago. So the purpose of this is to elicit emotions in people and to think about aging, because we believe that aging is important for everyone. Now I'll take you to the yellow room, and the yellow room says the diversity of aging. And getting older comes with losses. What are these losses? These losses are that our senses are less sharp, we lose some of our faculties, we find difficulty doing certain things. One exhibit takes them through what it feels like to have hand tremors. Another tests what happens to their cognitive ability. Others test their hearing loss, the degradation of their sight, and the loss of strength and eye reflexes. Now that we've visited the yellow zone, where we showed you the limitations of aging, I'm going to show you the pink zone where many people have overcome these limitations spectacularly. Mr. Ajit Singh. Mr. Ajit Singh is 92 years old. Right up until his 90s, he was still running marathons. This is Dialogue Room 2. In Dialogue Room 2, we explain to visitors the impact of aging on a society. Singapore is an aging society, and it is facing this problem right now and the future will probably be even more serious so we hope visitors will try to understand what happens in the future about aging and of course what they can do to help themselves in the future when this becomes an issue this is the end of our tour thank you very much for coming i hope you had a good time and you also learned a lot and of course you're always welcome to come back again I hope you enjoyed that little presentation. Uh, okay, now, uh, if anyone has any questions, can you, uh, the moderator will ask you. Uh, so Song Chun, do you want to ask the first question to get us going? Song Chun, are you there? Anybody there? Yes. Hello? 
Anybody has any questions, uh, please ask. Sorry, I had some problem unmuting because the screen hang. <laughs> Thanks, Asia, <laughs> for helping me unmute. Okay. Yes. Um, so maybe I'll ask the first question just to uh, get us going. Set the, get us going, yeah. Get, uh, get the ball rolling. So, so um, how do you think their experience uh, keeping an active lifestyle helps? I mean, especially if your time uh, teaching technology to the old people, how do you feel that that contributes to your active mind uh, and active lifestyle? How does it help in the aging process? Uh, you know, by the way, I don't feel I'm, I'm 75 this year. I don't feel that way at all. I, I, I don't <laughs> think about it. And, and I suppose all these activities uh, make me feel like I'm doing what I'm doing. There's, there is no aspect of my life that, you know, I'm slower or anything. I just do what I, I just do it, as Nike would say, just do it. So this is, a, this is my, my real philosophy in life. Just don't ask questions. If anybody asks you to do it, just do it. Don't have to think about what's going to happen, whether you're helping them or not. It doesn't matter. Just do it. So I believe, you know, that kind of mindset is very important for an older person. Don't think too much. Don't, you know, try to explain anything. Just go and do. That, that's, that's how it's me, really. That's what it is. So if some, like the technology, but I've been keeping up with technology. I'm kind of quite uh, tech literate. Uh, in fact, in some ways, even more than my young students, by the way. Uh, <laughs> and uh, it's, you know, keep an interest in life. Though. Everything is exciting. Everything is, you know, uh, is, keeps me thinking about different things. That's it. So don't ask, don't question, just do. That's how I live my life now. <laughs> I think I think you illustrate a very important point to me. Um, keeping a positive mindset. Don't think about the aging process. Just carry on as per normal. And I, I think that is a very important uh, mindset to have. Uh, so that you, you you don't think you're old. You can actually do a lot of things. Yeah, that's that's very that's very good. But I'm also yes. lucky in that I'm physically still healthy. So that that uh, helps. Okay, because some mm. people really you know if you are a little yeah. bit uh, you know if something's happening to you it might not be. But I'm lucky right. in that sense. Uh. Do you think it's your tracking, your experience of tracking in the forest, keeping no, active lifestyle? As, that no, I, you, the important thing that, you know, exercise, like, uh, physical activity is very important. So I still continue mm. to exercise three to five times a week. You know. So I still good. go Okay, now the, go the, questions are, the questions are coming in now. So oh, good, good. Uh, okay, let's, let's good. hear somebody else. Okay, so from Daniel Loy, an old friend of ours. Um, Hi, Francis. Can you share any memorable encounters with visitors in Dialogue with Time? And what feedback did visitors often share after the visit? Oh, okay. Uh, for the younger people, uh, their ex the feeling is that, uh, you know, they don't real they have no sense of aging, really. Of course, uh, when we were young, we are, we don't, we're not that way either. So uh, then we tell them these things are happening and all that. that it's, it's an education process for them, that there is a thing called old age, that old people are in some ways not as sharp as younger people. So these are the things that the younger ones uh, do learn, you know, it kind of uh, uh, triggers their mind that actually, you know, people do age. It's, for example, Daniel, which you had a little clip just now, actually show people aging. To them, aging is so distant in the horizon, it doesn't trigger any thinking in them. So here we at the Science Center try to uh, make them aware that people do get old, okay? For the older ones, uh, of course, you know, they, they see my experiences and they're, they're quite fascinated that, you know, what happened to me when I got <laughs> lost in the jungle and all that <laughs> stuff, okay? Was I worried and things like that. So uh, as the, the, the DWT, the whole idea of DWT is education, right? It's the, the education element is the major element we try, especially for younger people. And Science Center has lots and lots of young people. So our job here is to stimulating in their minds that there is such a thing called aging, that we mm. should be aware of it. And uh, because Singapore is good, this is going to be a serious problem in Singapore. So we try to induce in the young as early as possible to make them think about it. Right. Good. And then the second, second part of the question is, um, so what, visitors, what, what do visitors really feed back to you after going through the whole experience? Do you see a difference? I mean, it's related to the second question from Yoko. Yeah. So is it related to how, I mean, the younger ones will ask a different set of questions and then the older ones will ask another 
kind of a uh, I'm not sure. The younger ones, as I said, you know, they when they leave, they know. Okay, this is what there is a thing called aging. Actually, you know, right. Uh, for the older ones, some of them, you know, really to me, how do I keep active? You know, I'm 75, and mm. you know, and how do I? <laughs> Uh, how do I keep going, as you said, as you asked earlier just now, you know? Yep. And as I said just now, don't think about it. Great. Okay. Good. Okay, next question. We'll take a last other? question. So I, I think from Stanton, thanks for this question. So hi, Francis. What exactly do you Hello. do in the 15 hours in the mountain? How do you, <laughs> you stay, see, how, somebody how do you stay calm me and that. collected? <laughs> That's one of the questions. Yeah, 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 yeah. Correct. You want to share? I mean, can you remember? Or you... <laughs> no, of course I can remember. <laughs> Come on, this is even it's you know in, uh, carved in stone in my head. Man. I always can wow. remember. What happened initially is that I got a little worried, obviously. But you know, when you get lost in the jungle, when you're walking in the streets, you have reference points. There's a building, there's a road, there's a street name. When you're in the jungle, everything around you looks the same. It's trees and trees and trees. You turn around, you walk around. It's another tree. And every tree looks the same. I'm not a botanist or anything. I don't, I don't know the name of trees, right? So I just wandered around and around and around. But later, after the panic stage, you go through stages, right? The first stage is panic. The second stage is maybe, you know, there's nothing I can do about it. So let me just calm down and think of what I can do. So I started to look for a place to sleep. It was about 7 o'clock, getting dark already. So I just looked for a place to sleep and I found a river. On the river, there were lots of big rocks because I thought if I stayed on the land, you know, there are animals and so on around. So I found a big <laughs> rock, which wasn't big enough. So I'm kind of tall and I kind of tried to get some sleep. Huh? So I got right. snatches of sleep only, of course, and waited for the morning. And uh, because I thought the following day was morning was a Sunday. So I thought nobody works on a Sunday. <laughs> so I decided <laughs> to look for a bigger rock. So I walked around and found a, and found a bigger rock and it was much more comfortable. And I was, I was planning to settle for another day. But at noon that day, I heard some people shouting and wow, right. I was rescued. So it wasn't that bad an experience. It's, uh, <laughs> I mean, if it had been days, you know, it would have been much more traumatic. But it, it, right. it wasn't really that traumatic. Okay. It's kind of, okay. uh, it's memorable. Okay, right. any other questions of aging? Forget yeah. about me. Forget. Let's talk about. <laughs> it's the talk personal about experience about. that people want to know. Okay. Yeah, the last <laughs> question that I have here um, uh, from Eugene, uh, who you know. Uh, Hi, Francis. After hearing from the guides, were there any visitor perspectives that touch a court with you that you want to share? No, I. Let me think about that. The, the thing about aging, the. The fear about aging now in Singapore, at least, is dementia because people are afraid of being demented. You know, fine, we're all afraid of physical disabilities. We don't see as well, we don't hear as well, we don't think as well. Mm -hmm. But the major worry that many people have, and we, we do get into discussions about the whole thing about dementia, and it's a frightening, uh, it's a frightening thought for most people, you know, where you become, uh, as you know, dementia is a really terrible ailment. In, yep. The initial part, okay, you start to lose some of the things and get worried. And the latter part, when you don't even know anything anymore, is, I mean, although you don't know anymore, but the people around you do. And it's a very difficult relationship between people with dementia and those caregivers. So we okay. discuss some of those issues as well. But mm. it is a frightening, frightening prospect for anybody to get it. And, you know, the hope, of course, you know, it has been a hope for a long time, for 30, 40 years, you know, to find a cure for this. And up to today, with all yeah. the signs and, and money and all that, nobody has found a cure for this. Mm. We hope one day they will, uh, before yeah. I get old, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Good. All okay. right. Okay, that's the last question for now. I mean, later we can have some more time. We can have another round of questions and answers. So thanks a lot, Francis. Thanks, Great, uh, sharing. Thank you. Right. Thanks, everybody. So now we will move on to our next speaker. So our next speaker is uh, Miss May Kamata, who is a science communicator at Miraiken, the National Museum of Emerging Science and Innovation, Japan. So she has a master's degree in science for studying the identification and functional analysis of oncogenes using cancer cells. After graduation, she was involved in clinical trials in the fields of urology, internal medicine, and oncology as a clinical research coordinator. And since 
October 2018, she has been working as a science communicator at Miraikan and is engaged in activities to think about science, technology, and the future society through explanation of the exhibition, dialogue with visitors, and events both inside and outside of Miraikan. So may I invite May now to share about her experiences? Thank you. Okay, thank you. Can you see the slide? Yes. Okay. Oh, yes. Okay. Thank you. Now, okay. Thank you for your kind introduction. My name is May Kamata, and I am a science communicator at OEC at Milan. Today, I would like to talk about how to create a happier super aging society. The challenges of caregiving centers utilizing AI. The screen, uh, it's a screen but a globe. They put the globe in. They project it on here. Ah, I'm sorry. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Okay, thank you. Okay. There are two main things we'll look at today. The first is Japan's aging society. And the second is a new concept of nursing care and AI, a way of nursing care that can comfort dementia patients and the science and technology of artificial intelligence that supports those efforts. Let's now move to our first topic, Japan's aging society. We need to consider the changes in Japan's population structure. It was actually a population pyramid in 1965 before the aging of society. In 1970, Japan entered into an aging society after which the aging of the population continued to advance. In 2007, Japan became the first country in the world to become what is called a super-aged society with a great rate of more than 21%. This is an estimate of the population pyramid in 2020. According to the Ministry of Internal Affairs and Communications on September 15th, Japan's aging rate stands at 28.7%. Uh, which is by far the highest in the world. It is believed that this aging trend will continue to advance. As the aging, uh, as the aging increases and the birth rate decreases, it is expected that the population pyramid will be like this by 2065. The aging rate is 38.4%, a society where more than one in three people is elderly. Here, you can see a graph showing the working age population percentage and the aging rate per year. As can be seen from the trends in this graph, the forecast for Japan suggests that while the aging rate will increase, the working age population will decrease. By 2065, the average life expectancy will be about 85 years for men and 91 years for women, with just 1.3 working people per elderly person. As already mentioned, the aging of Japan is expected to continue. On the other hand, the working age population is expected to decrease around the, with a declining birth rate, with a resulting demand for nursing care to increase. In particular, the number of people aged 100 years or older is expected to increase 3.6 times over the next 20 years. And the number of people suffering from dementia is expected to increase 1.5 times. 
considering this social situation in Japan, we heard at that uh, event that focused on nursing care, where demand will increase. And in particular, we examined an ideal form of nursing care, where people with dementia can live a little more independently. With the science and technology of AI to realize this, let's take a look at that. There were two speakers. The first was Tadasuke Kato, a manager of a nursing care facility who lives and works in nursing care. Mr. Kato said and spoke about the image of nursing care and how there is a strong image to take care of elderly people, such as giving a bath and assisting with meals. The primary form of care is to help the person live his or her own life. But in most nursing homes, such care is unavailable and sometimes resort to uniform nursing care. As a result, these services are poorly suited to everyone and elderly persons sometimes dislike them, which can lead to problem behavior. Many nursing homes suffer from such behavior. Mr. Kato said that good nursing care is to create opportunities to demonstrate an individual's strengths based on their identity so that they can live in their own way. In one case, a woman always had an anxious look on her face when she came to the nursing home. One day, Mr. Kato found a rare ingredient that was only available in a certain region, the sea squat. He remembered that the woman was from an area rich in the sea squat. Then he asked her if she could cook it. Everyone praised the woman because she could handle sea squirts that no one else in the nursing home could. She found her place from that moment, so now she has become active in that nursing home. In this case, he recognized her work as a native area uh, where sea squirts can be found and her strengths to be able to cook a sea squirt and was able to relate her own life to the nursing home environment. Next, we spoke with AI researcher Shogo Ishikawa, who is researching how AI can help provide better care. There are two main areas of research conducted by Dr. Ishikawa. Let's start with the first one. Nursing care must be personalized, but this requires information about an individual's strengths and personality. This information is included in the care record and care professionals are able to extract and use the information. And effective caregivers use this information by making good use of caregiving records. But many caregivers, however, have been unable to make good use of caregiving records and Dr. Ishikawa decided to focus on that and make that visible to everyone. For example, by structuring the information in the nursing care record, it makes it possible to understand the personal information and how that can influence the behavior of the patient. By changing the approach to data in this way, we can see at a glance which information is being used for nursing care. Let's move on to the second method. The communication skills of see, talk, and touch are considered to be important for good nursing care. Many caregivers think uh, they perform well, but uh, it's difficult to put it into effect. Dr. Ishikawa focused on the skills 
analyze the data from skilled caregivers and develop an AI that could objectively see how well caregivers were communicating. The system measures video data and counts how well caregivers can communicate, see, talk, and touch. And they can check it by themselves and improve their own communication. There is a report that the nudging technology was improved by using this. As the number of people suffering from dementia increases, how to care for dementia will be an important theme. To prepare for the future with an increase in the number of dementia patients, we were able to get some hints from a manager of a nursing care facility who knows the actual situation of nursing care, and an AI researcher who conducts research in the field of dementia care. First, by providing opportunities to demonstrate an individual's strengths based on their identity. We believe that it is good managing care to enable each person to live in their own way. And in order to realize such managing care, AI can be used to utilize the information of patients with dementia and to aid caregivers to acquire necessary communication skills. That concludes my presentation. Thank you for your attention. Thank you so much. It's a very interesting uh, presentation. So now, um, I think it links very well with what uh, Francis was sharing about dementia, now using AI to find out about individual uh, strengths and based on them, uh, the caregiving records really can help them to communicate uh, better and in terms leading to better caregiving. I think that's the purpose of using technology to enhance kind of the aging process. So I, I, maybe I'll kickstart with the first question. Um, mm -hmm. You mentioned about uh, nursing care. So I know in Asian society, especially in um, maybe in Singapore context, uh, I think a lot of um, maybe our parents um, would expect uh, the, their, their kids to look after their, their, uh, to look after them when they get older. So I'm not sure, uh, is there any difference in the expectation in uh, Japan? Whether do the parents, the elderly parents, expect their kids to look after their parents? Or would they see um, as putting them in a nursing home as not being very filial? If you, do you understand what I mean? I'm uh, sorry. Yeah. Okay, maybe I'll rephrase it. Uh, in Singapore, at least in the Asian, in the Chinese uh, context, so we are, uh, the young uh, ones are expected to look after the parents. So, um, so the, the purpose of having kids is for us to really look after our parents. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure if it's the same in Japan. Do the older parents expect their kids to look after them rather than put them in a, a, a nursing care when they are old? Mm -hmm. mm. Oh. Mm. <laughs> slowly, no, no hurry, slowly, slowly. <laughs> so, uh, I can't say the uh, based on the data, but the, uh -huh. uh, there are uh, there are so many uh, people living in the their parents and or mm -hmm. kids. So mm -hmm. uh, the the shape of family is mm -hmm. a changing. Right. Okay. 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 <laughs> Sorry. Okay. So, so I think if I get it correctly, uh, you're saying that uh, typically your um, the Japanese parents would stay with their kids, but it's also mm -hmm. and now it's changing. I think some of them are open to staying in the nursing care, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. So there is uh, another question. Uh, what is the status of using AI in uh, nursing care in Japan? Uh, is this uh, funded by the government or is it by a private enterprise? Uh, 
Mm, uh, this is not a uh, fundamental of government. Okay. No. Uh, okay. No. So it's but uh, it's a private. Uh, it's a private uh, enterprise. Yeah. I see. Yeah. So uh, there's a question. Uh, can the works of the two researcher be shared? Uh, is there a website to find out more about uh, the two, the works about your that you just shared? Is there a website with more information of using AI, for example? Uh, yeah. Is there a website that you can share with us? Yeah. Uh, ah, ah, okay, mm. I'll send you right that. Okay, yes, then we can share with the whole group. I think people are very interested in this. I, I'm not sure if this is uh, explored uh, in Singapore using AI in a, in a caregiver's uh, home, especially in nursing home in Singapore. I'm not sure, but I think there are some uh, colleagues, I mean, some, some uh, guests here from maybe SGH, our hospital here, uh, or MOH, I'm not sure if they are here. So, I mean, I, I'm not sure we can take this conversation back uh, from, from here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is there any other other questions? If not, we can we, we, we can have another question uh, later. Okay. Thank you so much, uh, me. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you. Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, now let's uh, move on to our last speaker. So our last speaker is from uh, Thailand. So uh, her name is uh, Miss uh, Pim Hakka. So she is also a science communicator at National Science uh, Museum in Thailand. So she also graduated with a master's degree in educational technology from Kasekhsat University. She works as a science communicator of the education program development in NSM uh, Thail Thailand. Her work aims to support the ri rising awareness of science and to develop the science literacy. So she is also involved in a lot of training program development for professionals and teachers. And uh, they are looking at developing a science communication program in info technology. So the aim of this program uh, is to help the expert develop an effective program for the audiences and also to motivate all visitors to really use some of this uh, initiative uh, to help teachers so that they can apply to their teaching. In her views for the elders, there's a huge gap between uh, the, the elderly as well as technology and it's hard for them to live in this uh, digital uh, era. So therefore, the technology and information technology engagement of elderly people is a significant issue that, make, that, that they want, I think in Thailand, they want to drive the country's development. So without a doubt, improving personal uh, ability in communication technology for elder people uh, is one of the major projects that NSM Thailand is striving to, to move towards. Uh, so may I invite uh, Ms. Uh, Pim Hakka to share about their uh, information technology skills to enable the elders to have more of such skills in Thailand. Pim Hakka, please. Good morning, Good morning. Okay, I am delighted to be here today to talk and share to you about my work on improving personal ability on communication technology for elderly people in the neighborhood of National Science and Museum Thailand venue. My name is Himaka Sai Khao. I work as science and communicator in the Department of Academic Information Technology Museum or ITM at National Science and Museum Thailand or NSM. I will present in four key topics. First, introduction of, in, of NSM Thailand. Second, Situation of concern on elderly in Thailand. Third, project on online social media and smartphone workshop elderly and potential opportunity. 
I would like to introduce NSM Thailand. Our museum focuses on providing science and related educational experience through exhibition in the museum and educational program for people of all age and at many locations as possible. In order to promote understanding and enjoyment of science, as well as aiding the development of community whose value science, which also play an important role in individual life and development of nation. Next, I will talk about situation of concern on elderly in Thailand. The NSM has relied that in Thailand, we come close to an aging society since 2005. According to the National Economic and Social Development Board, according to the national, the 10 of age people whose the age are 60 years old, all our has led, particularly 2017, the number of the elderly to more than 11 million, or more than 17% of the total population. Population. Thailand faced the aging society in 2021. By 2040, the number will increase to more than 20 million, or more than 32% of Thai population. The elder use new technology in daily life because is health communication among family members and close friends. Somehow, they face some difficulty to use the technology, and they are uncomfortable to ask their children or grandchildren for help. It's cross generation gap. Next, I will talk about online social media and smartphone workshop for elderly. Our museum decided to conduct a workshop for the elder on the use of online social media and smartphone. In 2016, it's aimed to call them to use internet and relay technology in order to search data on their own page. The workshop provides various methods such as personal security and fun activity. The elderly therefore will know basic concept of smartphone and able to use the technology for lifelong learning and on their own interest. Objective of the project, to provide the elderly knowledge and understanding of smartphone, how to use the smartphone effectively, how to avoid the dangerous of using a smartphone and promote the NSM Thailand. Process of the project. First, contact local government nearby our museum. Second, sign up elder 30 to 40 people per time and three hour workshop. The project have five staff members, three staff members for academic department, one staff member from collection department, and one staff member from activity department. First of all, we equip basic knowledge on smartphone and various kind of internet connection. Then the attendants start to learn application use like Facebook and Live. Finally, we wrap up the workshop with game activity. This one helps the people to understand better application use in daily life. Along the workshop, NSM conduct pre-test and post-test questionnaire. They concern the use of smartphone and social media. The resource present the better know-how and understanding of 
the participant or relay technology. Next, I will talk about pro problem and solution. During the workshop, we found that some participants could not get up a few parts of section. Thin volatility of smartphone provide different interface format, and the font size in application were not reachable. Therefore, our staff will provide special training for them, so they become more interested and actively participate in the activity. However, I should mention on difficulty and limit during the elderly stay. In fact, sometimes the participant could not attend all section of the workshop because they had another activity in their daily life. So we decide to add the time and section. For example, we skip the section or registering email and add while of mobile device purchase because most of all, them already have their own email and smartphone. The section on the following years became more popular for the community needs. Between 2016 to 2020, NSM conducted a workshop in different places near the Our Museum. So there were 16 group joys the activity. More than 600 participants. The age of the participants are between 50 to 80 years old. Finally, we discovered that many participants tend to be helpful for our activity and outreach program. They might be volunteer in future training of different activity. This can key a relationship between the museum and local community in the future. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much. It's a very nice presentation. And I, I believe um, it dovetails very nicely into what um, Francis has been teaching. Uh, some of the Singapore uh, seniors as well at RSVP, where I think he teaches technology. I'm not sure how uh, different it is uh, compared to uh, yours. We can find out later. So I have a question. So um, when you uh, teach the technology uh, to the elderly, so do you go to their place or do you get them to come uh, to NSM for the training session? Uh -huh. Just a moment. Yes. Uh, let, let me help. Let, ah, let, hello, hello. <laughs> hello, hi. Uh, <laughs> yes, we do both. Uh, at first, we, we plan in our annual year that we going to go to the community nearby the museum because mm -hmm. to strengthen the, the business of the museum, we should have the, the strong community around our place as well. Okay. So mm -hmm. we go to the community and looking for the place that we can do the program. So at first we go, uh, we set up the training in the community. And after the year, after like a six or seven months, uh, we, uh, we will organize the day camp that the, the elderly people who mm -hmm. used to go to the program can join our day camp. We call like right. the, 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 the annual uh, elderly size camp in the museum oh nice okay right that's very good okay so is this a uh, camp uh, sponsored i mean by the museum or is it by a private company uh at the first year i think we run it ourselves and after that we have some company to join and uh, do uh. sponsor in some of the you know budgeting in the in the in the camp Right, right. Okay, that's quite that's quite useful. I, I think it sort of um it is it, what is uh I mean it's what has come out as well in, in, in the chat group. So if you build a community of seniors, they are even more keen to really come together. I think Francis and their group of uh senior guides also get together quite often 
I mean, for for makan, for food, and, and for yeah. gathering as mm-hmm. well. So it's really enriching. I think it's better, right, the community. Yeah. Yeah. Come, I'll open the floor again to to questions. Yes. Yeah. Okay. That, there's a there's a question. Uh, Thailand fully fledged. Is there? Okay. Okay. The question is: Is there extensive government support for this initiative? You know, see, I think the the stats is looking that by next year, I think Thailand will be a full fledged aging society, right? By by two zero two one. So, is there a lot of government support now being uh, given for 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 such initiative? Uh, yes, I think not only for the science uh, and the digital program, but also mm. for the healthcare and also the system, especially for during the pandemic time, we do have the volunteer for the you know the health health system, what we mm-hmm. call like uh, nursing for the community who can recording who is like uh, you know the elderly people who look um, stay at home themselves or something like that. Uh, I right. think more many more projects coming. Oh, that's very good. Yeah, yeah. I I think the government. I mean, I, I mean, Singapore as well. They're also doing quite a yeah. bit as well to enhance. I think knowing the trend that is happening, and I, I think for in Japan probably they're also the government is also trying to do more initiative um for for the uh, elderly as well. Yeah. Can I okay, make? Okay, come. Uh, uh, yes, Francis, please. Oh yeah. Uh, no, I just want to add a little bit about what Singapore is doing so that uh, people. Uh, sure. And we can share some of that. You know, in Singapore, we have this, I mean, it's a, it's a big, big thing because we have this thing called a Smart Nation Initiative. It is headed by a minister, Viran Balakrishna. And uh, all aspects of technology, of course, you know, the large one now that is uh, prevalent is this cashless. You know, Singapore wants everybody to go cashless. And uh, but the problem with cashless Largely, the vendors sometimes are reluctant, but the older people are finding it difficult, right? So uh, in RSVP, I used to, but I don't do it anymore. Now what RSVP does, was that we do technology training. We started off a long time ago when we did computers and all that, but now we know computers and tablets are no longer really that important. It's the handphone, which is the most, uh, the, the technology that most people use for interacting with technology is through the handphone. So lots of courses now are developed for the handful, but because it can be quite complicated. Mm-hmm. So what we do and some other people do as well is we just, you know, in one session, maybe one, maybe two hours, you just teach one app. So something, some bite size, you make it bite size, simple, just one app at a time. We don't want to teach them too many things. <laughs> and they, yeah. And the apps, of course, there, there are very, some very important apps that we that all Singaporeans now are probably using. The SingPass is one. Yes. SingPass is this app that is used for many purposes, which is created by the government for identification purposes. So SingPass is one very important one. Then we also do for cashless, for example, we help them try and use uh, our apps for banking for making payments, for cashless, for transferring money. It's now there's this thing in Singapore called DBS. Sorry, it's called Pay Now, when you can pay small amounts of money between people and to vendors or something. So there are courses for that. So we, we make it small, we make it simple, we make it very bite-sized, not too complicated, and just one at a time. If there are certain apps we think that people can use, we develop courses for that. Another one is, you know, when the... Uh, SG bus, for example, when you're sitting at a bus, you're waiting for a time to wait for a bus. So you can check the time when the bus is coming. So small, simple applications, one at a time, to get people kind of used to it in some way. And it's, it's as I mentioned, a large initiative. It's, it's headed, it, it's, it's a big thing in Singapore now. The whole mm-hmm. idea of using technology, not only for the general, pop, for the general population, really, but there are specific courses meant to make seniors more adaptable to using that. Uh, whether it's successful or not, I think it's still up in the air because cashless payments has been around for a while, but uh, among the older people, I find not many of them use it. <laughs> because cash is still the easiest. You give the money, you get the change, and that's it. Here you exactly. go, you open the app, do a scan and all that. It's not as easy. <laughs> so that's going to be a little hard to... I mean, young people are fine. They're, they're comfortable with it. But the older people, you know, cash is still king. It's, it's yes. not that easy. 
to use cashless for older people. And, and uh, in time to come, anyway, sorry to say, but in time to come, this problem will disappear. The older will disappear. It would, it would, yeah. So maybe I'll just share one personal experience. Um, uh, I think it was two years ago when I went to uh, China, Beijing uh, for a, a, a symposium. So I, I just popped into, there was a wet market uh, nearby. So I just popped in to get some fruits. Um, so I went to the fruit store and then I got a bunch of grapes and some, uh, I think some, that, that time was a winter pear or something that, that was in, in, in season then. So I, I wanted to pay um, the, mm. the, 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 old, uh, the, the lady who is maybe about 70 years old. And then I, I, I whip out my cash because I'm a foreign, I mean, I'm a foreigner in the country and I don't have the, the Alipay or WeChat pay. And I gave her the cash. Then she took a look at me and she assumed, because I look Chinese, she assumed I'm a Chinese citizen. And she said, oh, young man, um, you're so young and yet you don't know how to use, you know, electronic payment. <laughs> <laughs> you, should go and, you should go and learn. Then I had to tell her that I'm not local and I don't have an account. Then she accepted my cash. So, so I think in, in China, everything is including from the simple, just maybe a few cents. In China, they will just use the cashless payment. So, so I think um, they are way, maybe more in advance than us. So I'm not sure in Thailand or in Japan, um, is it also a cashless society now or you all still use quite a lot of uh, cash? Maybe you all can share some of this. Who's yeah, I, yeah. I think in, in Thailand, we do uh, just begin using the, you know, the app to pay something. Right, Especially okay. For our small local supermarkets, yeah. Okay. In Japan, is it a lot of cashless or you all still like cash? Uh, in Japan, uh, uh -huh. uh, a little by little, the number of people using cashless, but okay. I think uh, a lot of people using the cash. To the cash. <laughs> 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 right, right, right. Okay. There's an uh okay, there's a question now uh to everybody. Uh do do you reach out to senior citizens without access to internet for reasons such that when they are living alone uh in rural area or they cannot afford it or they simply cannot find access to, to one and they're isolated from the world? Uh if yes, how do you uh reach out to them and are there any uh platform to support their well being? Yeah, I think this question is open to the to the floor. Whether do you do you uh who wants to go first? I don't know, Tyler wants to go first or Francis, you want to take this question? <laughs> yeah, maybe I, I can go first. <laughs> okay. okay. Uh as for uh, the National Science Museum, we do have mm. like a project in our policy that uh, we don't think the elderly people is like, you know. <laughs> The vis that's only the visitor. In the next mm. following year, we might have them as our senior volunteer. You know, so that is like part of uh, the elderly people can be our community. And mm. in Stanton, there, uh, you know, because the elderly people still have their potential, they can, you know, talk about the technology in the past, how people living in the past, and this is very, uh, very valuable for the museum as well mm. as you know, the dollars that also have. Some of them would be like uh, the retirement teacher or some professor in the university who already retirement and would like to be part of the, our community and our museum. So um, I don't think like um, people when they retire or they get elderly will be useless because mm. they still have the potential to do the other thing. And I think it is the idea of our government and our museum to strengthen, you know, the potential of this kind of like, you know, this kind of potential to build right. up the elderly uh, people in community and also across the country to do yeah. the other thing more, to stay active, physically actively and also <laughs> mentally active. So it is like, uh, you know, building up the, the strong community. Right. Thank you. Huh? Do someone, I mean, Francis or me, do you want to go next to answer some, to tackle one this question? I think in Singapore, I don't know. Francis, you want to share? Which question are we talking about? Oh, do we reach out to senior citizens who cannot afford cell phones or who are well, isolated from the world? Are there any platforms uh, to support them? As you know, uh, 
well, we don't have rural, so largely yes, because we're, we're such an we're urban lucky. population. We are so small, and we are so small. As well. <laughs> <laughs> Correct, we're so. And internet, I mean, uh, uh, internet, and and uh, it's very everybody gets connection. Connections are not difficult here. Being a small city, uh, internet connections are not difficult at all. And yeah. of course, as you all well, recently just TPG, this telecommunications company now, mm. are offering very very cheap internet connections for people. For $5 a month, you can get an internet connection, now, which is affordable for most, most people, right? Uh, for seniors, that's the plan. Even for poorer people, they also have this plan. $5 a month, you get an internet connection on your phone. And for if you pay a little bit more, you even get a more phone. Get a phone. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. So there is an initiative to make sure that everybody has access to the technology. But of course, that problem is not I mean, it's not uh, easily solvable in other countries with big rural areas, plus bad internet connection. In, in the rural area, of course, you know, uh, you don't have so many masks to get your, to get to send <laughs> signals out, right? So in Singapore, yeah, it's not, that's not a problem. So we don't have, largely most people, even the poorer people have access to a mobile phone and the technology. So it's, it's a, not a big problem here. That's, that's what I say. The problem, obviously, is how to use that. And there are initiatives now to help people not only to have a phone, but to be able to use it as well. So Singapore is not a big problem, not being big, because we're small, basically. Yeah. You know, other like Japan or Thailand, I'm sure, you know, when you go to the rural areas, your internet connections will probably be very, very poor. Mm. So how they solve that problem, I'm, I'm not <laughs> sure. Yeah. Other May, you have anything to add? In Japan, is it a big problem for the areas outside of Tokyo or Osaka? Uh, uh, in Japan, uh, there is a problem at in the, at in the about the pension. Hmm. Uh, as uh, Yasushi uh, has described, and the pension system is very weak in Japan, and and, and that it's a very big problem. But uh, also, uh, the, the a lot of people about uh, retire the company about the age of 16, hmm. 16 years old. But the uh, recently most uh, uh, many uh, companies hire the uh, six, the people over the sixty years and work work with the elderly people. Hmm. Yeah, I think um, Yasushi. Uh, thanks for sharing. He shared that in Japan. I think the uh, biggest problem now uh, is maybe more of an economical uh, economics uh, kind of uh, problem where the pension system is uh, holding forth and then the number of people working to support the pension system in Japan is getting lesser and lesser with the aging mm -hmm. population. Mm -hmm. So I think that's, uh, that, that's the biggest problem I think Yasushi uh, shared. So Yasushi was a, pre a speaker at a previous uh, session. So thanks for sharing. Um, Can I add a little yeah. bit to that? Yes, yes, Francis, please. Yeah. As you know, in Singapore, we're different. We don't have a pension scheme. Ours is what they call a central provident fund scheme. Okay. Yeah, but it is also becoming an issue because also, you know, the, I think it's a problem for all aging countries where there are fewer people working to support the older population. Although in Singapore, our central provident fund scheme, which is not a pension scheme, is not the government paying you for your retirement, but you have to pay for your retirement as you, as you start working. So you keep this money in the, with a fund called the Central Provident Fund. And when you retire, that money becomes yours. Now that, although seems good, is also becoming a problem because of various things, people don't contribute enough into the fund for them to retire. So when they retire, they don't have enough money in that fund to retire. So there is also a scheme now, as we, in many countries that's happening too, is retirement age is getting long, uh, being, being delayed. You know, once upon a time, you retired 55 years old. That's unthinkable now. In Singapore, <laughs> it's been moving up to 62 and later now to 67. And very soon in years to come will be 70. So you won't retire until you're 70. 
so that you build up enough money in your fund to be able to last you for the rest of your life. It is becoming an issue as well. So retirement, I suppose this is a natural pro a problem when people live longer. When you live longer, you need to survive longer. When you need to survive longer, you need finances to keep you alive longer. So it's, it is a problem that Singapore is also struggling with. So, yeah. and one way to solve it is to, is to delay the retirement age. And that's mm. happening as well. Yeah. I think it's happening in quite a lot of countries. Uh, the retirement age is being moved, uh, I think, from 62 to 63 for us and then subsequently to 67 eventually. So some countries, I understand, is 70 now even because of the life expectancy. Been a lot, I mean, 80, 85, 89 even, I think. So that's why you will be working a lot uh, later now. So maybe we will have this last question uh, by uh, Wei Xing from uh, Taiwan. So it's a question for all the speakers. So... Uh, she, uh, he said, uh, she said, I really like the ideas shared by May uh, from Japan about strengthening the senior people's identity and incorporating AI into nursing home. So uh, do our museums work with nursing homes to promote these ideas? Uh, or what role do you think museums uh, and science centre can play in this aspect? Do you, I mean, who wants to go first? You are Francis, you want to go first? And I can add okay, on. Yeah, let me, let me just uh, take center. a shot yeah. at this. Uh, sure. uh, in Singapore, I think there is, a, as I said, there's this thing called the Smart Nation Initiative. And the mm. Smart Nation Initiative has all aspects of, of the technology thrown in for all areas of, of, uh, of, of life. Now, uh, of course, this, this idea about using AI in Singapore is already in many areas they're thinking of using AI for different purposes, for traffic control, for, you know, now uh, ERP, our electronic road pricing systems. So AI is becoming some uh, aspect of technology that is being used in many areas. And I can foresee that in aging, it will be used somewhere. But the idea that Japan is using it in their nursing homes to help communications between older people and caregivers and so on. I think it's, a, it's an idea that I think um, yeah. many people will start contemplating and copying this idea. And I won't be surprised if our Ministry of Health and all that is already thinking of, of these kinds of things. Because I know that we send some of our uh, MOH people to Japan. To yep. For our study institutes and correct, learning correct. from them, yes. Just some of these ideas, using AI to help in uh, aging issues will become quite prevalent. That's that's my sense. Mm. Good. Who wants to go? Maybe on the Thailand side and want to share. I think we cannot hear you. You need to un unmute your mic. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, I, I can see this uh, example for the answer is just for the latest uh, version of the uh, elderly people camps last year. We do have the supporting from the company who building the robot and they, they provide us one, um, how to call, uh, prototype of the robot who can take care of the elderly people. In this yeah. one, the, the, the company uh, idea to put the AI and okay, the information of uh, if you are the elderly people, what kind of you know function in the robot could be add in the, the 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 operation? For example, the robot can have an eye and uh, the, the the screen as an iPad to communicate with the elderly people, and then they can have the camera to capture what kind of, you know, the movement and the body, the physical movement of the elderly people uh, who use the, it, it like, a, you know, a plane, a nursing care plane. And then the, in the part of communication, the robot could be a, a mini, you know, screen to have a uh, YouTube or praying or sing a uh, karaoke, something like that. And it can connect the elderly people with their family who may be in the, you know, the, the, the who cannot, uh, who don't have a time 
to communicate with them. And then it is like, a, you know, the prototype of uh, the, the item for using in the nursing care. This could be like uh, the initiative project or initiative idea for using robotic and AI to mm. provide in the nursing care or the hospital. Mm -hmm. Right, very good. Yeah, May, do you have anything to add on? I think it's a very interesting uh, application of AI in a uh, nursing home. And I think a lot of countries will potentially look to really use it uh, in a nursing home in their respective countries. Mm. Okay. Uh, but now, uh, we are not working with the elderly people, but mm. uh, I, uh, as I introduced the AI, and the possibility of uh, working with the uh, elderly people, uh, there are possibility to working with elderly people using the technology such as AI or robot uh, and so on. Good. Thank you so much for sharing. Thank okay, you I think so much. thank you so much to the three speakers. So let's join me in giving the three speakers a round of applause. A virtual one, I think. Thank you so much for yeah. I, I think we today we have come to the end of the special aspect uh webinar. So this is second in the series. So we'll definitely be having more. I think the idea of this uh, whole series is to really get the whole network of science centers science museum together to amplify the impact of what we do as a science center. So uh, I think before you go, can I just request? Uh, I think Inshan uh, will flash a QR code to give. Uh, for you to give us some feedback and also uh, to give us some uh, uh, ideas as well of certain topics that uh, you want in the subsequent uh, webinars so that we can carry on uh, working on this and bring out greater program for everybody. Yeah, so with that, I think we come to the end of this uh, seminar. So I look forward to meeting uh, and hosting more of this uh, with the the speakers from other science center and science museum as well. And I think I also want to see you physically, I think as I ended the last session as well, to really meet you physically at other aspect uh, conferences as well. So thank you. In the meantime, stay safe uh, and have a nice evening. Thank you. Can you put the uh, survey form uh, in uh, link forms? Because QR form, like uh, uh, QR code, uh, those on handphone cannot do it. Oh, so you're using... Sure. Yeah. Mo mobile phone cannot do it. Can you copy the link for you? Thanks yeah, a lot. yeah. Thank you very much. Because I think some of, some of you are using mobile phone to, to do the... <laughs> yeah, do the, because we Zoom. can't do it. <laughs> thanks, thanks. Got it, got it. No problem, no problem. Thanks.
Thank mm-hmm. you.